Hey guys, it's Adriana from Adriana's Paper Crafts, and I am here today to basically just give you a very short, simple uh, tutorial on the basics of Photoshop. And we are actually going to create something today, and hopefully it won't take too long because I definitely don't want to bore you. Um, but let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. Now, if you didn't know, you do have to pay a monthly subscription to Photoshop. Um, it does have different plans, and so right now the one that I have, it's only like $10 a month, I believe. Um, and it works out pretty well because Photoshop is the only thing that I use right now, at least from the Adobe um, options. So this is what your home page will look like. It will always display your uh, recent projects. I'm going to go back real quick just to show you what I have up on my screen. This is my Bubble Guppies water bottle label that I created a little while back. Um, I wanted to do this one just because it's a very simple design. I love how just sweet and simple it is. And I was thinking that you and I could make a matching mini Pringles wrapper. Um, obviously, it's going to look very much the same. It's just that the dimensions are going to be different. And um, there are different ways that I go about everything. Um, so I kind of just want to show you guys what I normally do. But first, before we even like really get into it, let's just real quick look at what everything looks like in Photoshop. Now this is what it looks like on a desktop. Um, there is an app for Photoshop on your, for your phone or tablet, but I don't ever use the one on my phone just because, um, of course, the one on my desktop gives me much more control over everything. But up here is your menu, and over here on your left are all of your tools. So those are different uh, from each other. Up here is where you have your different like projects and such. And over here is where you have all of your layers, all of your properties, like properties is just letting you know details about the specific item that you are currently clicked on. Um, and then if you take a look over here, you can actually open up some more items. It has your history list as well as more options for your um, fonts and such. But I always keep that closed, so we're not even going to go into that. I always have my screen looking exactly the way you see it right now. So um, first things first, I guess let's just kind of take a look at this photo and break it down a little bit. What did I do? Um, if you look over here at document properties, you can see that the size of my item here is 17 inches wide by 4 inches tall. Um, of course, that is not the correct size of a water bottle label. You would never print out a label that is 17 inches wide. That's crazy. Um, but the reason that I do that is because I always double the size of what I actually need it to be. So, of course, um, that means that I always have my calculator up. So we're going to come over here. 17 divided by 2 is 8.5 inches wide. That means that my water bottle labels, when I print them out, they are 8.5 inches wide by 2 inches tall. So knowing that, when I go to create something, I know that once it prints, it's going to be this size. I double my canvas space. And the reason for that is to keep the high qualityness of it, because there are times when um, if I forget to, to double my canvas size and I go and print something, when it prints, it comes out kind of blurry. There's not that much detail into it, you know, uh, and, and I really don't like that. I mean, you can get away with it. You can definitely be just kind of in a hurry. Go for it. But if you're going to be charging someone for your work. Don't do that. You know, I always say that you guys have to be better if you plan on charging money for this. And so, yeah, so I always start with my canvas space, double the size that I need it. So we're going to go ahead and actually create a new, um, a new canvas. So you're going to click new, wait for your menu to pop up. And it'll give you the option to type in the size. And so I'm going to come over here. If you look here, it says pixels. I don't want to measure it in pixels. I want to measure it in inches. So a Pringles wrapper normally is nine and a half inches wide. So what is nine and a half inches wide doubled? 19 inches. So it's going to be 19 inches wide, the space that I need. And the height for a normal printed label is 3.13. So I'm going to double that. So make it six. Two six inches wide. You want to make sure the orientation is correct, which for the most part, I believe Photoshop always automatically sets it to what your sizes are. So, of course, it needs to be sideways. Where it says resolution, it should, again, Photoshop should automatically set it to 300, which is very good quality. Um, do not lessen that because you are going to degrade the quality of your item. 
Um, leave everything else alone unless you're really, unless you really know what you're doing. I've messed with this and I just recommend that just leave it like that. It's pretty average to leave it the way that it, Photoshop already sets it. And then as far as your background, you can make it transparent if you want. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave it white so that I can show you later on how to make something transparent if you want to. So we're going to go ahead and create that. And that is what the basis of your uh, Pringles wrapper looks like. This is the, the shape, the size. So coming over here, let's just look at what I've done. It looks like, of course, I have a pattern to this background. Um, in other videos, I will eventually go on to discuss how to make your own patterns. Um, and so for this template, I did create this pattern. I could not find a bubble background that I really, really liked. And it's funny because looking at this background, you're probably thinking like, what's so special about it? But I don't know. I just liked this one that I created myself better than anyone that I could find. I just didn't like the shades of the ones that I could find. So I created this one. So what you're going to do is in order to place a background, place a pattern on your layer, you want to come over here and unlock your background. Anytime you create something new or you open up a new photo, it'll be locked. But in order to mess with it, you have to unlock it. So let's unlock that. So down here, underneath your layer section, is where your FX options will be. This is the biggest tool that I use all the time, like literally for every project. I'm constantly down here using this FX button. So what you're going to do is you're going to select the item that you want. You come over here, we're going to go to pattern overlay. And overlay is very simply that. It's just something that lays over your item. So if you wanted to do color overlay or a gradient overlay, you would hit one of those. A uh, color, again, is just you're switching the color of it. Gradient overlay is a gradient such as this very almost white to dark blue that I used here. That's a gradient. So I created that as well. We're going to click that. We're going to come over here. I'm going to do a pattern overlay. And since the last pattern I saved was my bubble background, that's the first one that comes up. Obviously, if you take a look at it, it does not fit properly because you can see the borders here. You can see where it start, where the pattern basically starts over. So you would come up here and you would just mess with the scale of it. You can make it smaller. You can make it bigger. I'm going to show you a different pattern that I currently have saved just so that you can see. I uploaded this one just for the sake of it a while ago. And as you can see, it's, you know, the pattern is starting over, so we have to increase the scale. However, when you increase the scale and it fits, it starts to get really, really blurry. So if that happens, you are going to have to just basically use a different image. Because if an image is not high quality, there's nothing much that you can do about it. You have to go and just get a different image. So, of course, I would not use that one. So I'm going to come over to my bubble one. I'm going to de decrease the size a little bit. It looks like 325 fits pretty well. So I'm going to do that. And once you're satisfied with it, click OK. Like I said, you can move it around by doing that. If you OK this and it exits out, you will not be able to move your pattern. So you do have to keep this screen up. So I'm pretty OK with that. I'm going to click OK. Let's come back. It looks like I have a shape over here. This shape, I just used it as like a nice little border for like, you know, when you go ahead and put your labels on your water bottle, I just wanted a nice little border at the back. So um, as you can see, it's just a very simple rectangle and it's the color blue. I do want this to match. So what I'm going to do is click on it. It looks like I put a color color overlay. Double click that so it'll pop up the menu. You click that color box. And if I wanted to, I could change the color, but I'm not going to. Instead, what I'm going to do is come down here to where this pound sign is at or hashtag <laughs> and take a look at this number here. That number is the hexadecimal code for that color. So I'm going to just uh, go ahead and highlight it, copy it, which I always use a shortcut key, control C to copy. Click OK, let's close that. Now it's basically, once you copy something, it is copied to your clipboard. So Photoshop is like saving that until you paste it somewhere. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our tools and I'm going to click this shape button here. You can insert shapes. If you don't want to use a rectangle, you could click that little black arrow right here. It's very, very small. And you will see that you have different options. So you've got rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, which is basically a fancy word for a oval or circle, polygon, line, and custom shape. So this custom shape, all it means is like arrows and such, stars, you know. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you can place it anywhere you want. It could be all these different types of shapes. I'm just going to create a little rectangle. To deselect this, click on your move tool so that you can actually pick it up and move it somewhere. Now, as you can see, I did not make it big enough, so I'm going to come over here and widen it. You have to click somewhere else on your screen to deselect it, or you can come up to select and click deselect. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit more. Anything that goes past your canvas space, it will not show, so don't worry about that. Now, obviously, I don't want to keep it this color. So what I'm going to do is I clicked on it, and it brings you up these, this property spot. So it just tells you everything you need to know about that specific item. So it's letting me know the size, the color, if, it, if I want a border color. If so, this is the thickness of the border color and, uh, and all that. So I'm going to click this color box. And since I saved that color earlier, it is now right here. However, if your color was not saved, you would click on this box here, come down here and erase this, and paste the color you saved. There you go. It changed it. So, so far we have taken a look at patterns, um, shapes, color overlay, pattern overlay, how to create a new canvas. So we're doing pretty good so far. So let's keep going. All right. So looking at my background here, it looks like I added some bubbles. You can actually click on it. So yes, I added some bubbles. A good lesson for this, by the way, is if you look, while I'm clicking these, if you look over here, you can see that it's changing because it's selecting, you know, that specific layer. Now, I am really bad at not labeling my layers, so they all have layer one, layer two, layer three. I would suggest, if you're going to be working with a lot of pieces, to start layering them. That way, if you need to go back and select multiple items such as this, like this, you know exactly what you're selecting. And by the way, the way to select multiple items, go ahead and click one item on your keyboard, hit the button control and hang on to it. Do not let go. And then continue clicking whatever you want to click. All right, so to let go of those, I'm just going to click on one. So real quick, I'm going to change the name of this one. Let's do bubble one. Click on this one. And I want to do that just so that when I go to grab it, I know what I'm grabbing. You don't have to do this because, again, obviously I don't, but I don't want to be grabbing the most random things right now. I just want to grab these four bubbles. So bubble four, one, three, and two. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste them. So, again, Control-C on your keyboard will copy it to your clipboard. Control V will paste it wherever you want it to go. So I'm going to put them here, but I want to make them bigger. So you're going to click this little nodule down here and just drag it. So we resized it. And then you know what? I want another set exactly like this, but I want it to go over here. So again, copy, paste, or if you want to, you could come up to a layer and then duplicate layers. It will ask you to title it, so I'm going to leave it like that, and then move it, and there you go. So I might actually just leave, the, move this here, leave this here, sorry, just to kind of have some random bubbles laying around. And then as far as this set goes, I want them to face the other direction, like I want to flip them. So in order to flip something, you're going to go up to Edit, go down to Transform, because you're going to be transforming your image. And go all the way down to where it says flip horizontal. Now it's facing the other direction. So that's exactly where I wanted. 
these pink lines that you see showing up right now, those are my snap guidelines. That's basically just helping me align everything. We'll go over that a little bit more in just a minute. All right, so from there, I'm going to want to bring in the images of the characters. So normally what you'll do is you'll click File, you'll hit Open, and then of course find your images on your desktop. So I am going to bring in, I believe it's this guy, this one I used. I have copies of different ones just for different purposes. So I'm going to just bring in these three because I'm not even sure if they're the correct ones. Okay, good. And you know what, this guy still has a white background, so let's try and remove that white background. First things first, come over here and unlock your image. Because remember, if it's locked, you can't do anything with it. Now that it's unlocked, you're going to hit your magic wand. So the two options are quick selection or magic wand. I'm going to hit the magic wand, and I'm going to show you the difference in just a minute from those two tools. Magic wand will select whatever color you just hit, It'll do the entire image. So now that it's all selected, just hit delete on your keyboard and it all goes away. Now everything is still selected though, so you can hit your move tool and then select deselect. And there you go. However, if you didn't want to do that, you can go to mag uh, sorry, quick selection. Make sure you have your layer highlighted. I'm going to make this bigger real quick. And you would select that. Now, do you see the difference? I still hit the white, but instead of it selecting everything, it just selects a portion at a time. This is really good for when you don't want to remove everything, if you just want to remove a small section. Um, I mostly use this tool for photos that people send me. Um, for example, if you wanted me to include a photo of your child on the Pringles wrapper, and let's say the photo has a very messy background, such as grass, um, you know, very discolored wall or anything like that, just a very distracting background. I would select this tool to use only because the um, magic wand, you know, it's not going to be able to pick up all those different things all at one time. Because again, grass has very different shades of green. So if I click the grass, it's not just going to magically remove all of the grass at one time. It's going to select this one specific shade in that one single blade of grass. Obviously that would take a very long time. So I use this tool because it just grabs sections of your photo at a time. For example, if I hit this orange, it'll do a part of the orange as well. So again, uh, those tools are definitely very helpful, but you can use them in different ways. So I'm gonna get rid of this guy real quick. So once you open up your image, take notice that up here, it opens up in a completely different window. There are ways to import photos directly into your screen, but again, that's something that's a little more advanced, so we'll go over that some other time. For now, we're going to do this. What you can do is take a hold of your image and drag it to the window that you need it to be in. And then, of course, resize it. Let me look over here. It looks like on this side, she's over here, so I'm going to move her over here. So once I'm done moving that, I'll go ahead and close that window because I don't need it anymore. This guy, also move him over. Or again, you can copy and paste, whatever works for you. And real quick on this one, because I'm so detail oriented, we're going to do something real quick. If you take a look really closely on this image, the dog has little bubbles like right underneath him. I don't like them because when I, once I shrink it down, you know, like this, you can't tell that it's bubbles. It just looks like white spots, and I don't like that. So what I'm going to do, make sure you select the item. You're going to come over to your tools, and you're going to click this eraser tool. So with your eraser tool, you can change the size like that. That's really huge. And you can also change the type. I'm currently using the brush mode, that's why it's round. But you can use a pencil tool or you can use a block tool. The uh, block tool, you cannot resize it to make it bigger, unfortunately. But I do like this for when I'm like cleaning up straight edges like this. So for now, I'm going to use a brush tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. If you accidentally go, oops, 
<laughs> just click on your keyboard control Z or again let's say oh my gosh did it again you just come up to edit and undo eraser all right I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that up click your move tool to deselect it move tool and then resize it back to the size that you want so let's click them over here all right and like i said we don't need this anymore so we'll exit out of that and for the sake of the rest of everything else i'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it all but again i did not label my items and so i have to kind of guess like if i'm even pulling everything in correctly All right, let's see what I have on my clipboard so far. I can't even tell. All right. Don't need him, so we'll select and delete. Don't need her, select and delete. And then to resize everything all at once, again, we're going to just click one of these images, hit down your control button on your keyboard to select multiple layers. Let's go through these. And then just drag to resize. That way I don't have to resize them all individually, you know? Then I'm gonna center it. So as you can see that, that pink line straight down the middle, that is my alignment tool. So that's how I know that it's centered. Now obviously I still have to move some. I don't want her hanging off over there. So let me do that. I'm actually gonna make her smaller. And you know what? Look, she's hidden behind this bubble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that she, that layer selected. You're going to come up to layer, scroll down to where it says arrange, and then bring to front. If you look next to it, it has shift, control, and then the bracket. That's your keyboard shortcut. So if you don't want to have to keep doing everything with the mouse, learn your keyboard shortcuts. That way, all you have to do is click these items on the keyboard and it'll happen for you. All right, make her a little bit smaller. All right, obviously it's not completely, like it still looks a little off, like if these are too far this way, these are too close over here. So, um, but the best way to make sure it's all centered is to go ahead and put in the words. So over here, go to your toolbar and click on the enter text option go anywhere to resize it up here just for right now all right while it's still highlighted go ahead and type in what you want so i believe the other picture said kevin's first birthday all right so the reason it looks the way it does right now is because of the details right over here Again, this properties box tells you everything you need to know about the item that you currently have clicked on. So, uh, it has the name of the font. It has the size of the font, the distance between letters, and the distance between the lines. So, because the distance between my lines is only 11 points, that's why it looks like this. They're basically all on top of each other. So, we've got to change it. Come down here. So, that's better, but it's still not separate enough so i'm going to go ahead and select that 72 and type in something new all right so 100 is still not enough let's highlight it again let's do 125 uh, how about 135 all right so that's better obviously it's too big so let's go ahead and resize that oops okay and then there you go it's centered you see those pink lines those are my snap lines now if you ever want to get rid of that you're going to come up to view and uncheck where it says snap so just click on it now look at this it'll still give you hints but it's no longer pushing it to that spot like it did before now i have to like really be careful you know so sometimes i do need to remove those that snap option because i need to put something specifically where i want to but other times, I need the help. So I'm going to click snap again. There you go. It automatically like pushes it over. 
capitalizes B before it bothers me. <laughs> All right. Now, as you can see, there's a difference between these words and these words. This one has an outline of white and then another outline of like this navy blue. So what we're going to do is add a stroke to our words. The stroke is coming down over here to FX, hit stroke. Wait for the little menu box to pop up. And as you can see, it added a border around my letters. When I first downloaded Photoshop, that was probably the number one reason I wanted it because um, PicMonkey, which is, as everyone knows, is the tool that I always use, the website that I per previously used, and it does not have a stroke option. It, ha it does kind of have an outline option, but it's not the same thing. So here, your stroke menu, you can change the size. You can position the color on the outside, inside, or center it. We're going to keep it outside, of course. Blend mode, I don't mess with that too much because it can change the color, so I always set it to normal. Opacity is how see-through it is. I don't want it to be op opaque, so I'm going to just leave it at 100. And then your fill type. You Right now, of course, I want it to be a color. But later on, once we get into stuff more, we can change it to a gradient. So you can see where it's light at the top and dark at the bottom. Or you can even select a pattern. So that's my, my first pattern that I have. And so that's why I did that. Let's, let's take a look at what we did this. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to do that, though. We're going to do color. And as far as the color goes, I need it to be white. So I'm going to scroll up to white. And there you go. All right, but I also need a second stroke. Remember, we had white on the outside, but then we had another stroke that was like a navy blue. So you're going to come over here and you're going to check stroke again. Now you can see it has a little bit of black around it. Now that black is very thin because of the size. So let's take a look at this size. This size is 21. So that means that for this one to show behind that one, it does have to be bigger. So let's make it 30. Uh, it's still too small. How about 40? It's pretty good, but I want it a little bit more bubbly. All right, so let's do that. And then the other one is like a navy blue. Now, of course, when actually making these items, I do want everything to match. So normally I would just come over here. I would copy it to clipboard and paste it over here. All right. Or again, you could also just come over here, double click stroke. I want to know what specific color that blue is. So I'm going to click this box, come down here, and again, just highlight it and copy it. Come over here, hit this, hit your stroke, and then you're going to paste it right there, okay? All right, so there you go. But again, when because I want everything to look 100% the same, I'm going to use my original one, okay? So I'm going to stick that right there, and I'm going to go ahead and enlarge it, but not too much. So I don't want it to be, like, overwhelmingly big on the front of this Pringles wrapper, you know? So we're going to do that maybe a little bit bigger, just like that. I think that's good. Make sure it's still centered. All right. And then that's when you'll go and you'll place your characters properly around it. It does look like I'm missing that fish, so I'm going to go over there and copy and paste him. But again, you would normally open up a new file. All right. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. Grab this fish. Copy. Paste. And since he's behind the lettering, you're going to come up to Layer, Arrange, Bring to front. All right, so anything that has to do with your layers will be under that layer tool, okay? So if you wanted to send it to back, you would click send to back, send backward, whatever option is available for you. I'm going to resize him, place him right there. So, so far we're doing good. So far it looks like we've done shapes, we've erased a couple of things, 
we have tried new text, we have added strokes to our text, we've opened up new images, made backgrounds transparent, copy and pasted, we have labeled our layers, added patterns. Um, so yeah, so it looks like we're doing pretty good. And from here, it looks like all we're missing is our seaweed. So I'm going to just grab one seaweed, bring it over here. And as you can see right now, it's like in front. So what I would do in just a little bit is send it to back. But first, I want to copy and paste it. But I want to I want to flip it. So you're going to come up to edit one more time, transform, flip horizontal. So other things you could do, of course, is rotate it and, uh, you know, you could warp it in different ways. So what I'm going to do is grab my two. Layer, arrange, send to back. But of course now, because I send it to back, it's literally all the way behind, even my pattern. So what you have to do is drag it up. And, but the thing is, is that right here, there's a bubble in front of it. So that means that I still need to go up a little bit. So I'm gonna just drag it. That's all you've gotta do is drag it so that it's on top of your bubbles. And right there, it looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that. And normally, you know, that's it. You would then come over here, you would go to File, Save As, and you could save it as anything. I mean, PNG, PDF, a JPEG, a Photoshop file. Um, Photoshop does not allow you to save as, as SVG files, which are the files that everybody goes nuts for to use on their cutting machines. Um, that's completely different. You would have to download Inkscape in order to do that. And, you know, again, even for this, I don't need it for that. So I'm not worried about it. Um, but yeah, and then once you opened it up again, you would then resize it. So let's go ahead and actually do that. I'm going to save as. For just right now, I'm going to sound, uh, save it to my downloads, but normally I would save it to my Bubble Guppies folder. And I'm going to just title it um, Pringles Wrap. And then this dialog box will come up where it asks you um, what kind of file you want to save, it, like large, medium, small. Um, I always do large. Now, it saves it super quickly, as you can see down here, but it also takes up more space on your computer. So just keep that in mind. Now, normally what I would do is I would open up my PNG file that I just downloaded. See if I can find it. There it is. Go ahead and open it. And, of course, it opened as the size that I originally saved it as. And then if I was going to send this to someone or send it to my printer or send it to someone as a uh, downloadable file, I would create a new page. Wait for that to open up. Uh, it doesn't normally go so slow, but for me, it goes slow because I currently have a ton of Photoshop files saved to my desktop. And again, that just slows down my computer. But that, again, that's I have tons. So it's not like, oh. Is my computer going to slow down when I have 10? No, I have a ton of Photoshop files, so I just need to get more um, memory space. So I'm going to open up an 8.5 by 11 canvas space because, of course, as we all know, that's the size of a piece of paper. I do, however, actually want to rotate it the other way, so let's unlock it. Come up to invi uh, sorry, image, image rotation. 90 degrees. So if you click anywhere else, you can see over here, it's still 11 by eight and a half. So it's the exact size of a piece of paper. So you're gonna come over here and just click it and drag it over. Now, as you can see, it is much bigger than your canvas space, which is eight and a half by 11. Why is that? Remember, we made this label originally double the size of what it's supposed to be. That's why. So now you have to resize it. So come over here. And I believe the size I need it to be is nine and a half inches wide. And if you have this button, this little chain link button clicked, it will automatically change this ratio. It'll keep the ratio the same. If I did not have that clicked, it would have distorted it. So let me show you. I'm going to unclick it. And then right here, I'm going to just type in like 10. You see that? It distorted it because I did not keep my ratio the same. So let me undo that. And I always like to keep it clicked. 
All right, so you're gonna click one and then you're gonna go ahead and make a copy of it because you can fit two to a page, right? I like to center them on my page. And there you go. You would then go and you would print that. You would come over here, file, print. And then what's going to pop up is your print dialog box, which I'm gonna show you real quick. Um, I have mentioned before to some folks that I use Photoshop to print my chip bags from because it has a better color quality. Um, what I mean by that is that I am able to get a closer match to the color I have on my screen. Um, for instance, turquoise and aqua and purple, you know, even though up here on the screen it looks like a really nice, pretty light blue, when it prints, it comes out like very dark. And Photoshop doesn't fix that 100%, but it does make it better. It makes it a little bit better. And so just that's the only reason I print directly from Photoshop. So from here, you would then have to change your settings, of course. You would set it to your printer. Um, I'm going to switch it to make it go sideways. I currently have my color handling at Printer Manages Colors, which means that my printer is the one that decides what colors, you know, it comes in. But again, sometimes with certain chip bags, depending on the color they have, I switch it to Photoshop manages colors. I don't recommend you messing with that unless you're ready to spend some ink and some paper testing out the settings. I've done that so I know how to match up like what I want, how to get what I want out of my machines. But I don't recommend messing with that if you're not ready for it. And then of course your print settings, what it would then open up, you know, what kind of paper are you using? Uh, do you want it to be high quality, low quality, what? Now this, everyone is something that comes up a lot it says could not export the clipboard because of a program error so every single time i print i hit print settings and i make sure that i'm using you know best quality this will come up if you have copied and pasted a lot of stuff so that is one reason to maybe not use copy and paste but to use duplicate layer or you know things like that um I just don't really care. Normally, the only way to fix that is to go ahead and save all of your work and then exit out and then reopen Photoshop. So that's definitely a pain in the butt. Um, but again, we'll go over some cons, I guess, about Photoshop later. For now, I really hope that I was able to help you guys just kind of like see the basics of what you can do. Um, it looks like today we went over like resizing images, making images transparent, adding borders to stuff, making custom backgrounds, creating shapes. Um, we didn't do any drop shadows today, but I'll do that in another video. Uh, we duplicated layers. We used the eraser tool, text tool. Um, so, yeah, hopefully I didn't confuse you guys too much. If I did, let me know. <laughs> um, this is a very basic design that we did, and I think it turned out really good. Um, maybe next time we'll tackle, like, a chip bag or something, which, again, just involves a lot more moving parts. Um, and, yeah, you know, if you have any specific questions, let me know and um you know we'll figure it out we'll go from there now, if you don't already make sure you follow me on facebook and instagram that is adriana's paper crafts also if you're interested in what kind of items i'm currently selling you can go to adrianaspapercrafts.com to check out my shop and if you want to join our facebook group to get tutorials and uh, you know live videos from me and get one-on-one -on -one contact with me you can uh, go ahead and go to facebook and just type in adriana's paper crafts group Hopefully I see you guys around. Like I said, if you have any questions, let me know and I will see you guys next time. All right. Bye.